Since our 13th annual lecture in 2015, when Professor Thomas Piketty showed how structural inequality was a legacy passed on from one generation to the next, the impact of that legacy in South Africa has remained a primary focus of the Nelson Mandela Foundation. The global pandemic COVID-19 has now exposed with greater visibility across the entire world, not only the resilient reality of that legacy, but also its devastating impact on the value of being human in the world. Not only has the coronavirus entered human bodies and amplified existing illnesses, novelist Arundhati Roy has argued, it has also entered countries and societies and amplified their structural infirmities and illnesses. It has amplified injustice, sectarianism, racism, casteism, and above all, class inequality. The historic implications of this moment are that both within countries and between continents, the historic insidiousness of the inequality pandemic has emerged clearly in the face of the centuries-old ideology of white supremacy and the racism that gave birth to it. For many decades in South Africa, white supremacy was crudely displayed on the false pedestal of racial pride. Many people of goodwill around the world supported the oppressed South Africans to bring down that pedestal. It should never be forgotten that the anti-apartheid struggle was an international movement. It brought together many people around the world who believed in the dignity of all people. At the time, many powerful countries in the world cheered and, and appeared to condemn apartheid all at once. They got richer and richer while the victims of white supremacy in South Africa and those in other struggling countries around the world got poorer and poorer. The legacy of cheering and condemning still lives with us in the form of what Piketty calls the global inequality regime. While corporate elites around the world have sought to render such a regime normal, the global crisis of COVID-19 and the public killing of George Floyd have combined to reveal with dramatic effect the resilient and deadly connection between structural wealth and structural poverty. It is a connection that has shaped global trade and the politics of the management of that trade for some 500 years. An opportunity has come for the peoples of the world to remake not only the internal order within their respective countries, but also the global order through a shared understanding that in the new ethics of the global order, business cannot be separated from the necessity to uphold at the same time the shared human dignity of all people involved in the creation and management of the economies of the world. Vast profits can no longer be made at the expense of the vast majority of the peoples of the world. In his new book, Capital and Ideology, Piketty argues that dismantling the inequality regime is unimaginable without transnational justice and a move towards what he calls global federalism. The various forms of nationalist and identitarian retreats, which we see gathering pace across the world, will undermine fundamentally 
attempts to agree on a new social contract and to build a new world order. Nelson Mandela had the prescience to anticipate this very moment, both in its technical and its human features. This is what he said. In a world in which technology and communication have shortened the space between erstwhile prohibitively distant lands where outdated beliefs and imaginary differences among people were being rapidly eradicated, where exclusiveness was giving way to cooperation and interdependence, we too found ourselves obliged to share our narrow outlook and adjust to fresh realities. Who better to speak to this challenge and to interpret for us this moment than the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres? We are grateful to you, sir, for accepting our invitation and to your office for enabling you to give the lecture in extraordinary circumstances. We have followed closely Mr. Guterres' leadership of the UN through these months of COVID-19. And so too have we appreciated the work of other global organizations, such as the World Health Organization, and the enormous sense of responsibility they have shown in providing global leadership through the sketches of COVID-19. There can be no better time than to reaffirm the importance of such global organizations as the United Nations Organization. We in South Africa, of course, have followed Mr. Guterres' career across much longer trajectories. We remember his support for the anti-apartheid movement, his role in building a post-dictatorship and post-colonial order in Portugal, and his many contributions to building cultures of international cooperation. We are grateful for his unstinting promotion of the Nelson Mandela International Day from the moment he became UN Secretary General. How appropriate that he delivers the 18th Nelson Mandela Annual Lecture on the 18th of July this year. This alone will give Mandela Day 2020 a very special quality. It is with a great sense of anticipation that I on behalf of the Nelson Mandela Foundation, our trustees and staff, and our friends and guests around the world warmly welcome UN Secretary General Mr. Guterres to this platform to address us.